about a month ago, we built this awesome quad GPU, epic powered monster RAM rig. And I have really had a good time doing things like AI inference, testing out different GPUs, and also setting up Proxmox LXCs, all of those things in the channel history. But I have a problem with this system. Today, we're gonna get into it and try to get it solved. I noticed that I'm dropping some channels off of the memory. That's a big problem. Now, if you've got an Epic or if you have any sort of a large socket CPU, this can be a common problem that you face. There's a wide range of things it could be. Maybe it's just the alignment or the pressure, but it could also be a bent CPU pin. I hope it's not that, but we're gonna get in there and see if it is, and if it is, maybe I can get it fixed today. This really is the ultimate all-in-one system. 64 cores, 128 threads. We were not able to get the 512 gigabytes of RAM running because initially I was not able to see it actually showing up on the same RAM channels that are falling out now. That tells me that maybe, just maybe, we get lucky here and I can fix this all today. I hope you're excited. Let's get started. You can kind of see it right there. So it is not a glob of something that's gotten in there, which I kind of had expected it to be that when I started this. It is actually a bent pin. And I can see that it's right here. And just a piece of very firm paper is really all you probably need to make this work quite well. So I would not use any metallic tools for this. That just seems like it could cause a lot of additional problems more than it could fix. I think what I need to do is push one bend down on this end. And it is the very edge one, so it's very hard to see in comparison to the others, unfortunately. What I'm doing is just wedging this inside and then giving it a very gentle push down. Make sure you don't touch anything in there because you'll definitely cause it to get squeezed. Yeah, and these dudes are so small and tiny that when this happens on something like an Epic with this narrow of a pitch, boy, it's going to be hard to fix. I am having a hard time fixing this. So this is it right here. It's that furthest pin over there. And it's just bent down just a little bit more than the others now. It's coming back really, really close. But I just want to get it a little bit better. There we go. So that is actually pretty darn lined up now. From what I can see, I don't have the alignment issues that I had earlier, which is good. Whether or not we're gonna be able to have the RAM channels not throw errors is a bigger question, but there's really only one way to find that out, and that is to go ahead and put this all back together and hope we've done a good job of getting things lined up. Looks pretty decently lined up. Not 100%, but better than it was. All right, here we go. Okay, putting the 7702 back in this, our AMD processor, an Epic class. And for this, you need to separate those two Drop it into the sled gently. Hopefully it goes into the sled. Mine did not go into the sled there. Let's try that again. Drop it into the sled gently. There we go. And if you look on the bottom side, you should see that all your green is showing and it should be kind of all the way at the bottom there. One of my biggest complaints with the earlier generation boards were that they kind of have a lot of slop in them. If you saw that right there, 
that is a lot of play back and forth that this CPU has on it. This is very, very small, whatever the percentage off this is on this, but it is enough to be causing these kind of problems. So hopefully everything's gonna work out here. This is a ratcheting specific screwdriver. So as soon as I start to feel it break, I like to stop. And the reason why is because the actual CPU cooler, when we place that on here, will put down extra pressure on it. And that will be in contact with only, boy, I hope this has it fixed. I really do. Let's hope that's got it. All right, let's hope that I got that connected back properly. Oh boy, here we go. So this actually has to fully boot up before it will refresh this. So let's hope that that's what's going on here. You can see that we were missing dims on this side which is the side, incidentally, uh, the B1, A through D, that we had the uh, bent pins on. So let's, let's hope that we are getting that fixed here. Let's see if I can get the remote control to pop up. Oh, that's a good sign. That's a very good sign. Wow, okay. Whew. I'm beginning to get pretty hopeful here. Let's go and check the memory configuration that is being pulled up in the BIOS. Oh, wow. 512 detected. That's what I was hoping for. Okay. Wow. Okay. That's been a lot of work to get to this point. Holy cow. A lot of work. Sweet. And it is detecting them as all present. Awesome. And if you have an MZAR32, remember, you're going to populate the blue dims, which are kind of counterintuitive. They're further away than the black dim slots. And this is a two dim kind of configuration that you have possible. So we now have our 512 gigs loaded up in here. And that is just amazing. I am so so happy. So we're going to save the changes and exit now. And at this point, it should be showing up that we have the proper dim inventory. Yep, there we go. Oh, that's so good. Whew. I was so freaking concerned. I don't know why some of them don't have their uh, serial number, but that's fine. As long as this number is there, that's all that really matters to me. And now's a great time for me to mention something that you might be wondering, and that is the speed is 2133. If you have a better Epic CPU than I have, you would definitely want to pay attention to that and try to get maybe 3200 speed, which is what the actual Rome chipset should be at running spec wise. However, this does work and for you know, quad ranked uh, 64 gigabyte DIMMs that you have kind of laying around, put them to use. And this is not the fastest CPU. It does have a ton of cores, but it is not the fastest single thread CPU. So putting 2133 in here will have an impact versus 2400, certainly versus 2666. And it would be ideal to have 3200, but it will not be a tremendous difference that you would see as far as your performance for high memory bandwidth applications. If you are new to owning an AMD Epic, I'm going to introduce you to a few resources that you definitely want to read from cover to cover. And the first is the HPC, that's High Performance Computing Advisory Council. And they have a excellent write-up that will give you a lot of primer and information on AMD's second generation ROMs, memory, as well, a lot of different configuration issues that you can 
sidestep and bypass by setting and tuning your BIOS very specifically for the applications that you're going to be using. Of course, for training, high performance compute is essentially what we're running. So we will definitely be referencing this and running through this for my Epic, but this could also differ if you have a more general purpose setup. As well, there's also a great list of external resources. I will include both of these in the comments and let me know down below what your largest core count CPU is. And of course, if you haven't taken a chance yet to check it out, you should definitely check out the build guide that I did on this originally where I laid everything out, put it together, and we are having so much fun with it. So I hope that you have enjoyed this. I'm glad that I was able to get this fixed today, and I hope that this can also help you if you run into an issue with your AMD large socket epic this can also be applicable to any other type of cpu out there so if you are steady handed and you have a bent pin you really don't have too much left to lose you may as well give it a shot everybody have a great one and i will check you out next time